Hey fellow SweetScript developers, Eric from Stoic Software here again. And in this video, we will be learning how to add a custom button to a record form. Uh, it's a really common request, but uh, before we get started, if you would like to become a confident and competent NetSuite developer yourself, uh, you can get started now with my free email course uh, on the best resources for learning SweetScript on your own. Uh, you'll find a link for that at the top of the video description. All right, let's get started. How do I add a button to a record form? This is definitely a question I see a lot, so I'm really excited to tackle that here today. Um, and we actually have a few options as SweetScript developers for doing this, so let's see how this works. Um, SweetScript 2.0 added a very simple way to add new buttons to forms but that simplicity carries uh, some limitations as well. Um, if we take a brief step back, we know that if we're making a button, that means we are going to have a user who is working in the user interface, uh, the page is gonna load, our button is going to display, and at some point after that, we don't know when, uh, the user will click that button. When they do, they, well, we need some code loaded on the page ready to respond to that click. Uh, the only script type we have for responding to user interactions in the user interface is a client script. So that's where we start. We start by creating a brand new client script. So we've jumped over to WebStorm. Uh, we're creating a brand new empty client script. Uh, we're going to make sure that the script has a page init handler. Um, every NetSuite script module needs to implement at least one entry point, even if that entry point stays empty, uh, like it's going to here. And that's all we're going to do at the moment. Uh, we just have an empty client script. We are going to deploy that. Um, to the employee record in this case. So we'll use the employee record as an example for adding our button. All right, here is our brand new script. We have deployed it to the employee record. And as you may have already seen, uh, this is where the script record makes it very easy to add buttons. So we're going to edit this. Um, and all we have to do is give our button uh, a label. And we need to give it the name of a function to call when the button gets clicked. Um, it can be any name you want. So I'm going to call it on button click. Uh, I tend to prefix all of my click handlers or custom event handlers with on. That's just a naming scheme I've picked up over the years and, and clung to. <laughs> it's not mandatory. You certainly don't have to do that. Uh, it can be any name you want, but you need to remember what it is. Okay, back over in our client script, uh, we need to actually build our on button click function. Um, what is going to happen when the user clicks our button? Uh, for this video, I think we'll stick to something simple. Uh, we're going to pop up a message for them. So let's start in the client script by adding our custom function. Make sure you give the function name. Uh, this, you know, Make sure it matches exactly the function we specified in the script. Now, uh, because our function lives inside a NetSuite module, uh, just like any other entry point, we can leverage other NetSuite modules uh, or any custom modules as well. So for displaying our message to the user, let's leverage NetSuite's dialog module.
Okay, so we have added our uh, dependency on the dialog module, as well as some additional details in here. None of, none of the comments were mandatory there, but uh, we've added the module, so let's put it to work. So we're just going to use the dialog modules alert method and looks like we just need to give it a title and a message. And that's it. There's our button. It should show us uh, a nice simple alert when we click the button. So let's uh, upload these changes to our script record and test it out. Let's see what happens. Okay, we have updated our script. It's deployed on the employee record. So let's go find an employee. Okay, here's our employee record, but I don't see our button. So what's going on? That's actually expected. Uh, and this is the major limitation of adding a button this way uh, through the script record like that. So because the button is being added by a client script, and because NetSuite only loads client scripts when a record is being edited, our button does not show up in view mode. So we'll learn how to fix that shortly. For now, let's test out our button code. Uh, and to see that, we'll need to put the record in edit mode. Okay, that's better. There's our button. And now let's click it and make sure it works. Okay, nothing seems to be happening. Um, let's pop open our dev console and see why. Okay, so we're getting an error. Custom module dot on button click is not a function. So NetSuite is looking for a function named on button click. That's what we specified uh, here. So it's looking for it, but it's not finding it. Why is that? Well, when we wrote our function, we, we simply left it inside the module. We did not do anything to expose the function outside of our module. In order to make our function available outside the module, in a, uh, like to the browser, we need to export the function. And so all that, all that means is that we need to add our click handler function to the exports to the output of our module. So I have added on button click to our exports. This right here is, is the name that needs to match uh, what we specified in our script. I could actually change the name here, uh, but that's getting a little confusing. I always just make sure they match anyway, uh, but this right here is, is crucial. Um, okay, so let's upload that. We have added our click handler to the output of our client script. Now the browser should be able to see it uh, when we click the button. We refresh the page to reload our client script. And there it is, there is our pop-up. So if you see that error of, you know, uh, function not found, that is almost always what has happened. You have forgotten to uh, export the function from your client script module. All right, so we now have a working custom button. And if you only need that button to show up in edit mode, then you're all done. Uh, however, in my experience, the most common request is to have the button show up in view mode. So how do we do that? Adding a button is uh, effectively, it's a, a modification to the form object, right? In the user interface. And so we want to make that modification before the form loads, before the user sees it. And there's only two entry points that we know of that run before the page loads. We have a client script page init, and we have a user event before load. But we just talked about how client scripts are not loaded in view mode. So automatically, page init is not gonna work, meaning that 
the user event before load is our only option. So let's give that a look in help really quick. Okay, and so here's the help page for the before load event. And luckily what we see is that we actually get past a reference to the form uh, in the before load event handler. So perfect, this is, this is exactly what we need uh, to add our button in view mode because user events do run in view mode. Okay, so we'll, we'll keep this open for reference, but right now let's start by making our new user event. We only need the before load handler. There we are, there's our empty user event. So we know that we get past the form, a reference to the form through our context parameter, but how do we add a button? to the form. So if we look and help, we're already here on the form object. And right there, nice and convenient, right at the top, there is an add button method. Let's check that out. We need to give our button, just like in the script record when we specified it, we need to give it a label. Uh, this is what will show up the text on the button itself. And we need to give it a function name to call when the button is clicked. Uh, we also need to give it an ID. We don't need to, it's optional. Um, it's good to, it's a best practice to, but uh, it is optional. Uh, so let's add that code. Let's, let's add our button. Okay, so the label and function name will keep the same. And the ID, it's a good practice typically to uh, prefix it with cust page. And that's true for any custom UI component. We usually want to prefix them with cust page. That's kind of the recommended naming scheme that uh, NetSuite recommends, as you can see right here in the help as well. And that's it. So let's create and deploy our new user event. And since we have, since we're adding the button through the user event now, we're actually going to remove it from the client script. You don't have to, but um, we, we don't want to manage this from two different places. So if we had, if we kept them in both the script, the user event script and the client script, uh, you don't want the labels to get out of sync for some reason. You don't want the functions to get out of sync. So we just want to manage this in one place. We're going to keep it in the user event script. We're going to remove it from the client script. So looking back at our employee, if we refresh, refresh the page, our, you can see the buttons moved. Um, it's still there because we did not, uh, we have our user event running on all event types. Um, we can actually restrict it. So if we wanted, let's say we want this button to only show up in view mode, we can modify the deployment. And say, I only want this deployment to run in view mode. There's other ways you can determine the uh, type, the event type to show this in. You can do that in code through the context.type property, uh, add some conditionals on that. You could add multiple deployments, one for each event type where you want the button to show. A couple different strategies there. Um, we don't want to go too deep into those, but uh, you have a lot of flexibility with this option is the point. So we're only going to show it in view mode. So now if I come back and I refresh again, our button is gone because we're only showing it in view mode, not in edit mode. So if we cancel, now we come to view mode, there's our button, click the button, and there is the same error again. Why are we seeing that? We exported it, we added it to the output. <sighs> okay, so as we said before, client scripts are not loaded in view mode. So NetSuite has not loaded our client script module on the page, so our click handler is nowhere to be found. One last thing to do, and I promise this will be over and you will know how to add buttons. Uh, so, 
We have to go back to our user event. And what we actually have to do is force the client script to be loaded um, in view mode. And we do that again through our form object. So let's go take a look at help again. What we actually need to do is attach the client script to the form through one of these properties. We can either attach it through the file ID or the module path. Um, I prefer to use the module path. Uh, that is usually a lot more uh, consistent across accounts. So if this is a suite app maybe, or something that you're deploying to multiple accounts like a sandbox and a production, usually you wanna specify by the relative path, uh, not by the file ID, which could change across accounts. So we have to specify the full path to our client script uh, starting at the file cabinet root. Um, so in our case, that is suite scripts, learn suite script, SS2 add button, and there it is. So here's our full path. Okay, there's our full path, including uh, all the fold, all the subfolders, starting at the file cabinet root, uh, the file name, and its extension. So that should attach our client script to the form uh, in view mode. All right. Moment of truth, we refresh the page. And voila, we clicked a button. There is our message to the user. And there we go. We have now seen two different ways to successfully add a custom button to a record. The first way is simply through a client script. It gives you a nice user interface to add a button, uh, a button with a label and a function name. Um, it's nice and fast, but it is limited uh, in its flexibility as it only shows up in edit mode. The user event option is the second option we just saw. And this gives us a little more control, but it does add a little bit more code um, and yet another user event script uh, that you may or may not want. It's totally up to you which method best suits your situation. And that is it for this lesson. If you liked what you saw in this video, hit those thumbs up and subscribe buttons. Go share what you learned with somebody else. Uh, if you find this kind of content helpful, uh, please consider showing your support and joining these lovely people right up here as content sponsors. Uh, you'll find a link for that down in the description as well. As always, thanks for watching. Keep learning, keep sharing, and I'll see you next time.